What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. So earlier this weekend, as many of you guys have seen, I ended up going to the Kizuro Kai uh, USA Japanese woodworking event. I shared a video here on YouTube. I believe that was yesterday. I, I just took out the camera, I started filming, and I built up a video from that. That video I was so proud of. I thought it turned out really well um, from the comments and the responses that you guys have given me. Um, it sounds like many of you guys would have loved to attend it yourselves, and I, I can do nothing more than agree with you. So, But for this video, I'm just going to talk with you and share my experience and what I've learned. So the event that I went to this last weekend on the 21st, I didn't actually go to um, both days of the event. I was only able to go to one on, on Saturday, and that is what I filmed and shared with you. Unfortunately, um, I didn't get to see the, the planing competition. I would have loved to see that. On Saturday, I saw a bunch of guys setting up and setting their planes, and that in itself was, was pretty fun to watch. So, I guess I'll start out with my first impressions. Here in my area, we don't have um, a lot of events that come around. I don't actually live in Oakland, California. I live a few hours away. I don't have a whole lot of experience um, going to these kind of shows. I went to the Maker Fair back in May, and I went to this one here this last weekend. I do hope to go in the future to some other ones. Um, maybe eventually I'll fly somewhere or do something like that. Um, my neighborhood and my community, there are a few people who do woodworking, but not a whole lot. So when I first got there, I was just in total shock and total awe of the amount of people that are there to talk about woodworking. It was an amazing um, feeling walking into this, this shop. It was one of the members of the, um, the, the club, I think it is, and there's this big, huge open shop, and there's this big door, and you walk in, and I just saw maybe 75 or 100 people that were there to learn about Japanese woodworking. Now, I don't have a ton of experience with Japanese woodworking in particular. Um, I have kind of gotten into it over the last couple of weeks and the last month or so, um, you know, buying a couple tools here and there, but I haven't ever actually met someone in person who's had many years of experience in Japanese woodworking. So that was definitely cool to, to, to learn from those people and to just watch. I mean, I obviously filmed a lot and shared that in the video. Um, I definitely did talk to a bunch of people, but I just enjoyed watching people. I, I liked people using the planes. I liked the people that were cutting or sharpening or doing whatever. Watching them was quite enjoyable. I didn't think that that was going to be the, the thing that was the most enjoyable to me, but it was. I could sit there and watch these people do their, their Japanese woodworking for hours. So the things that I got to see were some presentations by a few people and I also just got to walk around look at some different joinery. I got to look at a few books. Um, there were some people that actually brought their own tools that you could look at, try out. Um, there was obviously a lot of stuff for sale. I actually, believe it or not, I went through the whole day without buying something. I know some of you are probably like, oh Wesley, at these events you have to buy. You have to, because there's nowhere else you can get it. That's not necessarily true. You can find the same stuff. Um, it's just a little bit harder to do that online and trying to communicate with someone. The stuff that they had there was so incredibly expensive. Um, I was completely shocked at the, the, the pricing for their kind of stuff. But after learning about it and talking with the people who are actually selling the tools, you can totally justify that price of thousands of dollars for a set of chisels or a saw or a blade or whatever. Most of the tools that we see um, regularly come from Home Depot or a, a home improvement store. I know many of us obviously shop online like Amazon and stuff like that, but to see the tool in person and to know that someone actually made it with their hands and put in hours of work, it was just an amazing thing to witness and people were in fact buying those tools. It was, um, it was shocking to see the amount of people who are so serious about woodworking that they spend that kind of money on it. Now, I, if I had all the money in the world, I would definitely buy those tools. They are excellent quality. I got to use a few actually. Um, I got to use a chisel and a, a Ryobi, not Ryobi, Ryoba 
saw, I think is what it's called. The, the thing I liked about this event in particular is that there was a schedule, but there was also just some, some free time and some time set aside where you can just go and watch or learn or talk to other people. And that was something that I really liked about this event in particular, where there's not just a set schedule and you go, 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 but you're able to actually walk around, you can talk with someone. If you have a question, you know, you can easily just go up to one of these guys or girls and learn from them and improve your woodworking and maybe inform them on something that they didn't know. I was also trying to film and learn at the same time, so it was a little bit difficult to do both. But one thing that I picked up on that was so interesting is he was talking about roughing down a piece of wood from a, a rough board cut off from a tree and milled to a board that you can actually use to do joinery and put into a piece of furniture. That process of going from rough milled to a piece of wood that's ready for joinery is there's a lot of stuff that happens in between that most of us take for granted um, because we have all the power tools to cut, plane, joint those pieces and it takes a fraction of the time that someone who does it with hand tools um, it takes a while. That's how I started out with a lot of my western planes. I had to mill down those pieces myself and it was hard. It truly was hard and it will give you some Popeye arms, I'll tell you that. He talked a lot about the characteristics of wood, but the science behind end grain or side grain or different bevel angles or all that kind of stuff. Some people really enjoy that. Some people could find it the most boring thing ever. So the thing that he explained so well kind of have got my brain wrapped around this and that is um, specifically with Japanese hand planes let's say for example the bevel angle of that plane is 28 degrees now you could either lower the angle and get a more efficient cut but the blade isn't going to be as strong because it's at more of a shallow angle now the thing that he described that I've been trying to wrap my head around is if you instead of adjusting the blade this way but instead skewing it off to one side a certain degree it can the 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 wood would technically read that angle as a lower degree therefore you're able to get a more efficient cut because the the the, the wood reads it lower but it's still a steeper angle. I probably just described that in such a weird way. Um, I do apologize for that, but it makes sense, but then again, it doesn't make sense. If you lower the blade, you get a more efficient cut, but it's not as durable. If you raise it, it's more durable, but not as efficient. But if you skew it, then you can have a combination of efficiency and durability. And after I heard that, it was just like, psh, I had, no idea that that simple of a task of just skewing the blade slightly could then um, yield an efficient and durable cutting cutting surface. It was just amazing. It it's so simple, but it's just I don't I don't know I don't know how to put it. And there were many things I learned in this event that I had no idea that you could even do with a piece of wood. I mean, I'll put a picture up right here. The stool that someone built, oh my gosh, this thing was amazing. There, you, you can tell a difference between a plain surface and a sanded surface. Even if it's up to a high grit, it still has a different texture from a piece of wood that was sliced rather than sanded down. They were talking about the pores and how the wood, the, the fibers, and it was, just, it was just amazing to think that people have spent hundreds of years learning about this and this is what they've come up with. It was just a truly amazing thing to witness these people that have spent years and years of studying this and working with wood that they could then turn out something like this, this stool and yield a a piece of furniture that is truly perfect. It looked freaking perfect. I mean, the person who built it was like, oh yeah, there were plenty of flaws. I mean, look here, look here, look here. And I'm just sitting here like, what the heck? Like, I can't, I can't do any of that stuff now. I mean, I'd love to be able to do that, 
but it was just an amazing thing to witness and to look and to touch these pieces of furniture that that come from masters really so this was kind of like my story my my rant my explanation my sharing with you of my um, experience at the Kazuro Kai USA 2017 uh, event. I, I really do hope I said that right. Is it Kazuro Kai? I, there are so many different words in the Japanese language that I have no idea how to say. I'm probably butchering it and I have no idea and I'm sitting here with the camera telling you anyway. So that was my explanation. I really do hope some of you, maybe it's just one of you, got enjoyment out of this. It was just something that I wanted to film and share with you. I know this isn't like my normal video. I know many of you guys hate me talking. Some of you like it and I greatly am appreciative of that. I hope you enjoyed yesterday's video on the actual event. That was a blast to film. But to wrap up this video on a, a side note, the gift box giveaway that I'm doing here on this channel for you guys, there have been so many of you guys who have uh, entered to win that box and I'd just like to thank you again. I know I thanked you in the last video, but thank you. Simply saying I want the box shows me that you care about what I make and you care about the content that I put out for you guys. So that box, that giveaway, I'm going to put a cutoff date of Tuesday at midnight, Pacific Standard Time. I know that there are different time zones, so midnight Pacific Standard Time, um, if you live in a different country or different state, um, make sure that you know the time in which that is in your, your location. I will do, I know for a fact, I will do a few other giveaways here in the near future. That is basically going to be it for this one, guys, and I will see you in the next video.